Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Science Saturday. I am so excited. I'm always excited, right? We know this. Um, but today is supremely important, special, amazing. Today is the five-year anniversary of Science Saturday. Can you even believe that? Five years. I don't want to say we've been doing this because we've done a lot of different things. Um, we started, oh goodness, five years ago at, got a shout out, Lattes in Paradise with Jenny. I just saw Jenny and we're going to say happy belated birthday to the original, uh, the OG of Science Saturday who would give me free coffee when I came and ran Science Saturday um, through in person into uh, starting the Facebook Live in my yard. Um, and now here we are on our five year anniversary at the, at the science, like surrounded by science at the Children's Museum. How perfect is this? Uh, I am so happy about it. And I just, you know, I want to take a few more seconds as people are kind of logging on to the live to say that it has been amazing and it has been with the support of everybody watching and the feedback I've gotten throughout the months, throughout the years to keep on going. In the five years that we've been having Science Saturday, we have missed one, one single Science Saturday, uh, which was September of 2017. And I dare say nobody could blame us, uh, but we came back the next month in October and we kept going uh, we had another little disruption in March of 2020, and we kept going. We moved to Facebook Live. You guys kept on logging on, and I am so appreciative. And the way that it has grown and all of the supporters, uh, quick shout out to Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands, who believed in the program and my switch to this format and gave me a grant to get the equipment that you guys can't see because it's over there in front of me running everything and my fuzzy mic. You guys know I love my fuzzy mic. Um, everything has been amazing and of course the support of the Department of Planning and Natural Resources, my division, Coastal Zone Management, running this program and maintaining outreach through all the wild things that are going on has just been really amazing and I love learning new things every month um, and I hope that you guys do too. So Whew, got a little, got a little real there. But now back to where we are. We are at the Virgin Islands Children's Museum here on St. Thomas. And this is, you know, you might say, gee, duh, why didn't you do this before? Um, I know, right? But we're gonna do it again. We're gonna come back again because this is such an amazing resource here for families on St. Thomas if you're visiting from St. Croix or St. John. Uh, also, if you're not like a traditional family, I love coming here and playing. It is so much fun. Book a meeting, do something, partner with them, become a donor, just find an excuse to come to the Children's Museum. So I am here today with the main lady running all the programs. And I know you have a very official title and I can't remember it right now, but I have Amber, woo! Hey. So, where are we? Who are you? What are we doing here? Okay, good morning everybody. Good day, wherever you are. Uh, we're at the Virgin Islands Children's Museum. As Kitty said, I'm Amber McCammon. I'm the Director of Programs, so you had it. I was, I was there. You were there, <laughs> half of it, and curator. Um, and today, we're gonna be talking about a few things to Ooh. celebrate the fifth anniversary of Science Saturdays. We're going to really switch it up and talk about a few different things. So I'm really excited. There's a lot happening this month. Um, it's also Youth Art Month, so we have a bunch of art throughout the museum, some of which you're going to see at the first table we're going to stop out today. But that's not what we're focusing on. So some, some children did some Taino art, Ooh. so you know some pre-Columbian Virgin Islands history. Love it. In celebration of Virgin Islands History Month, we're going to go even further back and talk about the formation oh. of the territory. All right, so we're gonna be talking about some rocks, some earth, so earth science. We're also gonna be talking about some space science and hopefully getting into one extra special bonus demonstration oh. at the end. All so, right, so I have to do a true confession right now as we transition to our first table. I'm afraid of outer space. 
It cool. terrifies me, the concept of infinity. Um, I like to look at space as a beautiful painting to kind of like make my brain work like that. But as is with Science Saturday, I am facing my fears. I am learning about it. Uh, you guys will remember when we went out collecting bugs on St. Croix. Oh, yeah. And I was like this close to a spider and it did not eat my soul. So here we are for science to calm my fears and get moving. Uh, and of course, as always, we have Science Saturday intern Mason Hismush. Hey, are you excited? I am. Okay, well, let's go. Where are we going? Hey, cool. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Well, first, um, you know, we're going to jump back and forth in our Pangeo Hall here. Um, I wanted to ask you, Mason, um, do you know anything about how the Virgin Islands were formed? I don't know. Really, I yep. no, I really don't. Well, that's okay. <laughs> so, do you know what the main rock types are? Probably, like igneous. I know a few. Metamorphic sedimentary, that probably ring in a bell for you guys. So yeah. we actually have all three types here in the Virgin Islands, but, oh, should I be holding them? Uh, I mean, <laughs> the fuzzy mic is very It is popular. fun. You don't it have is to, fun. but it is very popular. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, it reminds me of a triple. Yes. Trouble with triples. So <laughs> space nerds. All right. <laughs> Back to Earth science. The Virgin Islands was actually formed a very, very long time ago. The earliest rock records are somewhere around 108 million years ago, subsea. So oh. pretty cool. We're an oceanographic place for sure. And yeah, the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas was formed a long time ago. The very earliest is Water Island Formation. So you can go down by the airport and see some of those rocks. Super cool magma basically pushed its way up through the earth's crust you can i don't know if you want to pan and see our beautiful mural here you can kind of see um what we're talking about volcanic magma pushing its way up once it reaches the surface whether it's underwater or in air now it's called lava okay so magma and lava are the same thing as just whether it's inside or outside the mantle um, when it gets pushed out under the sea that lava then interacts with the ocean and changes chemicals, exchanges minerals, and so forth. Um, it cooled, hardened, created a nice little volcanic cap under the ocean. And then with continual change of plate tectonic motion, sea level change, and so forth, eventually it broached, reached the surface of the water and we got our island, right? A very cool fun fact that not a lot of even locals know is the island of St. Croix is actually two islands. What? Yeah, it's is Twin this, City. It's a salt river? No. So it's the, um, it's the Eastern Ridge and the Western Ridge. So uh -huh. Frederickstead and Christiansted are the two Twin City, the two parts of their separate, they were separate islands when they were formed subsea. And I believe it was around 11 million years ago that with continual shift, Earth is a dynamic place, uh -huh continual shift, they pushed their way up and out of the ocean, and they created a nice shallow area in between the two islands. What happens in shallow areas in the Caribbean? What do you see a lot when you go snorkeling around here? Sand, in wildlife, coral. coral. Absolutely, that's right. A coral reef got established in between the two island peaks of St. Croix, and created a seaway for, what? yeah, so you get all those cool creatures living in the coral reef and, you know, over time they actually get embedded in the reef. And so now today, if you're driving on the highway on St. Croix, you can actually see the ancient coral reef creatures oh. in that central calcium carbonate of the middle of the island. Guys, my that make sense? coral scientist why have not why have not <laughs> why haven't we learned about this this is wild i'm so excited yeah. so you know virgin islands history month yeah we're going way back virgin islands history is coral reefs yes okay. yeah yeah you wouldn't right. have the island of st croix if we didn't have coral reefs so All we right. have so much to be thankful for for them if you want to before we take out look at our actual cool rocks Let's take a look at this super cool map we have here in Pangeo Hall. We have an amazing 
image that was put together by NOAA and NASA. Uh, lots of different images used to stitch this together. They basically pulled out all of the, the clouds and the ocean waters so that you could see the land masses. And even under the ocean, you, you're kind of touching the Hawaiian Islands. You can see the seamounts. You can see the Mid-Atlantic Ridge here. So again, the Earth is a very dynamic place. And the tectonic plates, as they move, they either spread apart, like what you see at a sea ridge, or they might collide, like you see. What I'm outlining here with my finger is the Caribbean plate. That's where we live, right? There's a few islands that are kind of considered Caribbean that aren't actually on the plate, like Cuba, uh -huh. Turks and Caicos. They're on the North American plate. Yeah, OK. Right? So posers. <laughs> <laughs> They're Just still kidding. still Caribbean culture. Still so. Caribbean culture, yeah. All yeah. right, I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have the South American plate, of course, to the south. We have the Cocos plate to the east. And to the, you know, the west there is really a combination of the South American, North American plate. But our Caribbean plate, you can see this boundary line. Mm -hmm. This is why we have so many earthquakes. Right. You guys feel earthquakes, right? Yeah. And we have microquakes frequently. Yeah, turn on that Vipima alert. Yeah. Shout out Vipima for always letting us know when we didn't feel an earthquake. Yeah. Um, but every once in a while you do and it's pretty intense. It's very intense and earlier this week Vipima did a tsunami yeah. alert and preparedness like drill, yeah. right? So did anybody take part in that drill? Um, I you did it at your school? school. Good. All right. I got the alert on my watch and my phone. I was home safe, way up on the mountain. Good. Uh, but definitely saw the word test first. So yeah. thank you, Vice <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not unduly scared. Well, because this plate is interacting with the other plates, um, it's actually we're in a subduction zone in our area here. Our plate is much lighter, it's less buoyant than the North American plate. So we're overriding and coming up over the North American plate. And we are taking over. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes, we're taking over North America. Um, <laughs> and because of that interaction, that's where you're getting earthquakes and volcanism. And those two things are what can drive a tsunami, you know, okay. instigate a formation of a, a tsunami. So what did you learn? in that tsunami drill. What are you supposed to do? Well, first, what are you supposed to do in case of an earthquake? In an earthquake, you um, go under a table. That's good. Or a piece of furniture, hold on to one of the legs so you don't slide out from under it and cover your oh, I spinal can cord. Mic back. Okay. <laughs> your head or your spinal cord. Mm -hmm. Important. And right, so the three big words is drop, cover, hold. So you drop down, Gosh. cover that head, just like you said, cover that spinal cord, and hold on until the shaking stops, right? If you can get under a table, all the better. If you feel shaking so strong that like it would be hard to stand, if, even if you're in a place where you might not hear the tsunami warning, you should probably try to get to higher ground. Okay, okay. That, that, that's a good measurement there. So yes. so much that you're like, whoa. Mm -hmm. All right, take it seriously. Nice. If you're along the shoreline, try to get to higher ground. Okay. Yeah, we have had tsunami, historic tsunami here in the Virgin Islands. Yeah, we have. So mm -hmm. can't take it for granted. Yep. Let's check out some cool rocks. All right, we're gonna go, go this way. way. So we've got a great display, feel free. Yeah, check them out. We've got a magnifying glass. We have um, kind of just an information sheet here about the rocks of the Virgin Islands, front and back. I have a number of examples on the table. And one of the things I like to challenge kids to do is find ones with crystals embedded. Ooh. And we can talk about why some of them might have crystals inside. Yeah, you found uh -huh, granodiorite. Say it with confidence. Granodiorite. <laughs> Does that have any relations to dynamite? Yes. No. <laughs> well, you'd probably need dynamite to break it up. All right. Because it fair. is super strong. Now, so one of the things that um, we test rocks with is hardness, right? So you could really tap on it, scratch it, figure out, see how hard it is. This is actually batholithic material. And there's something very cool about the Virgin Gorda Baths. Mm -hmm. They're named after the batholithic rock. Right. It's a batholithic rock formation. And that happens, these are formed when you had 
pre-existing lava that came up, cooled, hardened, became rock. It was already there. And then more magma tried to push its way through. It made its way into the rock. It's right here, this kind of gray area called intrusive plutonic. Ooh. So batholithic rocks are plutonic, plutonic rocks. They're intruded into existing rock. And then that existing rock over time just slowly wore away with natural weathering, wind and waves and rain and, and so forth. And what was left and what's exposed are the beautiful harder because they were able to cool more slowly oh. embedded inside the okay. other rock. That makes sense. And form crystals. Yeah. Harder rock remains while the softer stuff Very cool. eroded away. Very yeah. cool. Very and cool. This one, I believe, is the beach rock. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was artificial because mm -hmm. this kind of looks like a like a broken piece of like cement mm. or something with gravel in so, it. But it's like Yeah. Gravel. So that's a very good thing. So actually, this is not beach rock. We do have some beach rock over here that we can talk about. But um, good observation. That's what scientists do. We observe. That's the very first thing in the scientific method. You observe oh, wow. something interesting and you start to ask questions about it. So great job. We do have some beach rock we can talk about over there. This is actually. Um, you can't pick it up because we had to glue it down so the kids wouldn't walk away with it. But it's actually pumice. This oh. is, if you could pick it up, I mean, you can feel it and kind of get an idea. It's super, super light. It's actually um, not very dense at all. It's filled with air bubbles. So for a rock, it's very light and it will actually float in water. Ooh. And some of these pieces I got after Montserrat blew the last time. And it actually, it's floated pumice material that came all the way from Montserrat and floated on the surface oh. of the ocean and I collected it. How That's cool. Fun. I love it. Yeah. And pumice rock is what is used in pedicures, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, bringing science into Beauty. treat yourself life. Yes, yes. <laughs> Self-care. Yes, you could use pumice to, to kind of rub away that old skin, <laughs> the All rough right. calluses and so forth. Very you can cool. use it to clean your toilets okay. because we do try to save water here, right? So if it's yellow, you let it mellow. <laughs> if then you got to clean. The pumice can help you get everything All right. nice and clean. People use it on their um, cast iron sometimes oh, to clean as well. Very interesting. Yeah. All right. Rocks are cool and useful. Let's talk about the beach rock. Since you, you brought that up, it's something you observe when you go down to the ocean, to the shorelines. Thanks for sticking with us. So here's some beach rock. This is a great example of a sedimentary rock. So far, we've been talking about volcanic rock and even metamorphic because it's gone through some kind of secondary change. This would be probably considered maybe a little about sedimentary and metamorphic um, because it's this aggregate. It's a conglomeration of multiple different things. Sand, pre-existing volcanic rock, shells, or um, you know, other things that are biogenic, made from life. Um, yeah, Ooh, I like that word, together. biogenic. Biogenic, biogenic. So calcium carbonate, the limestone that is made, um, the rocks that are created by the coral reef organisms is considered biogenic. Biogenic, I yes. love that. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Word of the day. Yeah. One of my favorite rocks on the table, I think last one that we'll focus on. You guys are welcome to come back anytime, check out our cool rock exhibit, and I can tell you about more of them. But one of my favorites is right here. Um, these are kind of small samples, but you can get, see really, really big ones by the airport. It's again part of the water island formation. And the name is super long. It's columnar jointed keratifiers or columnar jointed intrusives. Ooh. Very interesting in that it's actually large crystals. You see the, oh. the hexagonal shape. Some of them aren't com complete hexagonal um, or octagonal, but some are. And it's because that material was able to cool nice and slow. It had the time to form large crystals. Okay. And it's beautiful near the airport, like behind the little restaurant. You can see what it, it looks like. It's almost the way that the, the lava was flowing. Right. And slowly cooling. Um, I don't know if it really is that, but it looks like it, it's fun to see. So if you're walking cool. like me, go see what you can find <laughs> by the airport. You can also see the really cool hydrothermally altered rocks 
Ooh. by the airport and a lot of the South Shore where you get these really beautiful colorations. I said last one, but I can't stop. Uh -huh. Right behind you, Mason, this one, these rocks would be considered metamorphic because they, they were volcanic, but when they came up, they interacted with the ocean and that interaction caused a secondary change, so metamorphic. They're more brittle and they have these beautiful colorations. You see the reds and the yellows. That's the minerals inside that are oxidizing and creating the beautiful colors. Interesting. Very cool. Huh. Yeah, I like the color. So, I think that is a very good bridge into our next activity. So, we did a little bit of earth science. Now, we're going to get into some space science. Ooh. And Miss Benida is going to have you join her just behind the table there. And she'll tell you all about some more uh, chemistry of the universe. And we'll do a fun art activity, too, for Youth Art Month. I love it. Okay, cool. All right. And I'll see you back in a few minutes. We're spinning around. And like magic, Smush is already there. All right. Hi guys. Hey. Hi, so my name is Zenaida Rogers. I'm the staff manager here at the Virgin Islands Children's Museum. Today we are going to be talking about planetary nebulas. Ooh. And because it's Women's History Month, I'm going to let you guys know about Dr. Beth Brown, an astronomer. She was the first black woman to earn a PhD from the University of Michigan. She was born July 15. 1969 and died October 5th, 2008. She was born in Virginia. She loves Star Wars and Star Trek for mm -hmm. long. <laughs> she said she went to a, a class trip and they viewed the Ring Nebula, which I'm going to get into how we got its name, the Ring Nebula. And she said that is what pro projected, um, propelled her to get into the field of science. Very cool. So, Today we're actually going to be talking about planetary nebulas. What planetary nebulas are, are the, they occur at the, either the beginning or the ending of a star cycle, mostly at the end. What happens is that when a star dies, which most, most stars that die are low mass stars. Well, all stars die, but low mass stars, when they die, they create planetary nebulas. They're called planetary nebulas because back in the day, they didn't have good technology. So when they looked at the tel through the telescopes, they assumed that they were planets, but they weren't really planets. So they, that's why it oh. has its confusing name. But they, call, they are called nebulas because they create, when they die, they project this dust. This dust, and the dust forms like this. Oh, beautiful. It projects dust and gas and elements into the atmosphere. Very pretty. I know. We're going to create our own nebulas. Ooh, that looks nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still terrified, but that is beautiful. So we're working through, yes. working through my fear of outer space. We're almost there. That's very good. <laughs> so the, the gas, they actually, and the dust, the dust actually create having elements. And those elements can be formed in the earth, in us and throughout the solar system. And even the precious metals that we use for jewelry, can be, they came from the dust or gas that were emitted from the stars. You can even have a, a planetary nebula form, which are formed from low mass stars, or you can have a supernova, which is usually way bigger, way more chaotic, and that only usually happens when high mass stars die, because they, when they die, they it's like a big explosion. Would you say that our sun is a? Yes, our sun is actually a low mass star, so eventually it will die. And when it dies, it will create a nebula. See, the thing is with nebulas, the reason why it can't, it, they happen at the beginning or either the end is because if the same dust and gas that is omitted when they die, they also can form new stars. Oh. So it's called a nursery. That's cool. Interesting. Yes. 
So the different scientists use the different colors as elements. Like most commonly they use red as like hydrogen. So we are going to create our own here are some examples. This is what you would a nebula would look like. Ooh. And each nebula gets its name from the image that it looks like. Like the, there's the cat's eye, there's the ring, there's even one that's connected called the um the dragon. It's just oh. it gets its name from what it looks like. But they use the the scientists use these colors to describe the elements because we cannot see the element that some of the, the stuff with our own eyes. They can only see through telescope and deep observation so in order to project the images out for us they use colors so this one would be like magnesium like the blue would be magnesium okay so for this just gonna lift it up so you guys can see the other nebulars that were created okay smush is ready so think of this as the galaxy it's like a black hole and we're gonna create our own nebula, which is gonna create light. So, you could either use these to drop it in, or you could just go oh, across your hand. Maybe I'll use the dropper. Okay, so um, what element would that be? Um, magnesium? You can choose, you could, we could just pretend. We're just gonna oh. pretend. We're gonna what is our... your nebula made out of? I'm not sure what nebulas are made out of. Um, yeah. Hydrogen. Hydrogen? Any, any, any element. Any element you can think of. We're just going to pick random elements. And hydrogen. So blue is hydrogen. Okay. Fun. All right. Do four, do five or ten droplets. Precision, the artistic in the middle, yeah. It's gonna be beautiful. Okay, so you choose whatever colors you want. Um. Calcium. All right. We've and you know you have calcium in your bones. Okay. That comes from the stars. We are actually made of stardust, guys. <gasps> oh, we are yeah. all made I had of a little picture book that was like my favorite yes. book. We are made of stardust. Because all the elements that are found in our body are found in space. Space is actually pretty cool. <laughs> it is. It's just scary. <laughs> to me the sea is more scary because I can't swim uh, I can't fly <laughs> <laughs> I made a funny You'll do four colors. so make sure you put them close together because when you when you're finished we're gonna have to move it around a little bit Get it started. I think your last one should be gold or platinum or unobtainium. Unobtainium like isn't five? real. No, do a, do like okay. three more droplets. Okay. So it can be real pretty. Huh. All right. What what element is that? Iodine. Iodine. Yeah, okay. The only element I can think of at the moment. Okay. <laughs> All right. This is gonna be beautiful. So, what were what were your four elements again? Smush. We have iodine, hydrogen, calcium, magnesium. and magnesium. All right. Spending time. So tilt it a little bit, move it a little bit to get it, to get it moving. 
Ooh. See, it's already yep. spreading out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is what the explosion would look because it's like. Alright, you ready to explode? Yeah. How much should I do it? A lot? A couple times. Woo! Do a little bit more. One more time. Okay. Creation of a nebula. Nebula. It wouldn't be Science Saturday if I didn't make up a song, right? Yeah. Nebula, creation of a nebula, hydrogen nebula. So remember, I pl um, planetary nebulas are how, st how stars die, but that's actually how they're formed as well. Interesting. They, yes. Uh, the gas and the dust form other stars in plant nurseries. They become nurseries. That's how we never run out of stars. Yes. All right. The cycle. So it's always good to remember that, you know, the sun is a star, so it will die eventually. And it's like kind of. Six, eight billion years. No one knows. No one knows. But it'll die. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> it's Ooh. All right, careful. Let's see. The Smush Nebula. Do you need fingernails? Oh, I love it. Let's see. The blue is on either side, so like little. Get me out of the shadow. It's Groot. And I present to the world Groot the Nebula. Smush Nebula. It's Groot Nebula. Groot Nebula? Groot. Okay, the Groot, Groot Nebula. Oh, it does look like Groot. And his arms out. He's like, I am Groot. All right. That is beautiful and amazing. And I love it. We'll say that my fear of space is slightly diminished with the beauty of Groot Nebula. All right. Okay, great. Are you ready to move? Yeah. yeah, I'm going to have Mason join us. Hi again. Amber again here. <laughs> We've got one last fun activity. Um, Mason, you're going to stay on the same side of the table as me, but we have a Moy here who's going to help us out with a super cool demonstration. Are you fine standing over on this side? Okay, so, so many things to celebrate this month, right? We've already co covered a few. VI History Month, Women's History Month, it's Science Saturday's birthday. It's the Virgin Islands Children's Museum's birthday month, too, what? actually. Whoop, 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 whoop. Um, so, so happy and thrilled that you guys are here with us. We have one last little demonstration for you. We're very thankful for those of, that donated some dry ice to oh. us. So, Ooh. hard to get dry ice in the territory, but they're bringing in the COVID-19 vaccines on dry ice. Oh. So, we've been able to access a little bit. So, I'll ask you, Mason, first. What is real ice? What's the ice that we use in our drinks made out of? Um, it is frozen water, one of the three forms of matter. Yeah. Three, four, I, I, yeah. That's right. What and are the three forms of matter? Gas, liquid, solid. Yes. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, bonus points. Absolutely. That's so cool. And water is, you know, in chemistry, it's H2O. So two hydrogens and one oxygen. Dry ice is not made out of water. It's made of carbon dioxide. So oh. one carbon and two oxygens. Ooh. Now, something very cool with carbon dioxide in its solid state, um, it does something very weird. It doesn't go through the three states that we're used to, like we are with water, where it goes from a solid to a liquid to a water vapor or gas. Dry ice goes straight from a solid to a gas under normal Ooh. atmospheric and temperature conditions of our planet. Okay, so we're going to do a fun demo. Amoy is going to show us some dry ice going to take him just a minute to get to it. We have to pack it in like super, super cold containers so that it doesn't become gas right, <laughs> right before, away. Before we get a chance to see yeah, it. Yeah, before we get a chance to see it. I had a bunch of dry ice at a birthday party when I was like 
it was my eighth birthday party. I had a Harry Potter themed one. Oh. And we made and we made like uh we got cauldrons and filled them with dry ice and put them everywhere. Science is fun. Uh, science yeah. is absolutely fun. And they use it a lot, so you see it a lot, you know, more in the States for Halloween, theme parties like that, and movies. It's yeah. movie magic. Mm. Yeah, they use dry ice for, for movie sets all the time. We're hoping, <laughs> I know the Virgin, the University of the Virgin Islands is trying to be, get to the point where they could make dry ice to sell Ooh. to all of us, so hopefully we'll get there. <gasps> Let's take look a close look. Gorgeous. Let's just take a close look at this dry ice. I can see the dry ice roll fast with that camera. Whoa. So we don't touch it with our bare hands. This is why Amoy has double gloved hands right now so that he doesn't risk frostbite. Right. Dry ice is much, much colder than water ice. Go ahead. So he's gonna put some into our Erlenmeyer flask. Oh. And you can see that it's already yes. sublimating. So that's the, the cool word of the day. One, another one. Another one. <laughs> another How many cool words. words? So it's already going straight from a solid to a gas. But when he adds some hot water, <sighs> and now Mason, feel free to play with that vapor. You don't want to touch dry ice directly, but you can play with the vapor. It's cold. And so that was hot water. It was hot water just to help what? the reaction take place faster. Ah! It feels yeah. like I'm dipping my hand into like nothing. And the good thing is you're not going to be able to get your hand all the way down to any very dangerous. So yeah, play with it. Even feel the side of the flask and how the glass itself starts to get Ooh. cold. So fun. So, I feel like most of my life, my only knowledge of dry ice was that it's used to ship ice cream. And I don't know if it still is, but we used to go to Fire Island in New York in the summer, and the ice cream shops would get ice cream delivered with dry ice. Nice. It probably still is. Um, mm. Kind of funny, I was up in the States visiting family fairly recently, you know, before the pandemic. Um, and they had they were selling dry ice just at the grocery store at the front of the oh. supermarket and it was Dr. Dre's dry ice. <laughs> and so he had a whole thing there. It was so cool. Marketing so you folks. It. You can buy it uh, people, you know, get it for Halloween, like you said, for fun Harry Potter parties. If I blocked this, would it explode? It will not explode. I'm scared. Away, right? It is uh, like a little nook and crevice. You can see that it's the vapor is building uh -huh. up. And when he releases that, it's just going to have. Okay. You can see it's finding it is it can to come out. Uh, ah. <laughs> now, if we do this enough, I'm going to pick this up and see if it's already happened. You can dump it out. Oh, we can dump it water. out. It's because it's a water, and the the dry ice is now evaporated, right? Um, if we do this enough times, the water itself freezes. Oh. And so you think, oh gosh, I still have more. Why isn't it doing, why isn't it, you know, sublimating uh -huh. anymore? It's not, it's the water now that's a frozen block of ice, not the dry ice. Whoa. We're going to do one more cool thing. Mason, if you would put a few drops of soap into the graduated cylinder. Maybe five drops or so. Now, I'm always going to put quite a bit of dry ice in this one. Yeah. So if any pieces fall onto the table, just don't touch it, okay? We, we only want to touch it with our gloved hands. I'm handling this very well, you as are, you can see. You. You've got your safety <laughs> shield. <laughs> <sighs> look at that one that fell on the I thing. It's like... Let's see how much you have in there. Maybe, let's try to add a little more. You can use your hand to help guide it at the top. There you go. There we go. We're getting some good dry ice in there. And now maybe a couple more drops of soap right on top. Oh, I think you closed the lid. <laughs> now it's green soap. Let's see if uh, that makes any difference. We've added something with color. I can see the green soap in there. Is it going to be green poof? Oh, so much poof. I want to touch the poof. Oh, whoa. Oh, my. <laughs> We're getting vapor filled oh. soap bubbles. Wow. And we can touch those? Yes, yeah. pop them. Pop it, pop it. You can hold them in your hand. Wait, wait, I want to get one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> the 
this is probably not recommended hand washing technique, <laughs> but really fun. It's a first step. This is, this is getting yourself sudsy, and then you'll want to rinse with fresh yes. water after. <laughs> Get the bubbles in. <gasps> No. Uh, it's such a weird mixture of hot and cold. It is. From like the hot like water a going microwave in. Microwave burrito. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here on Science Saturday. It's like a cheap microwave burrito. <laughs> well, oh my god. I just wanted to thank um, our staff, Zanida and Amoy, for helping with these fun demos. And I wanted to thank you. Kitty and the whole Science Saturdays team for thinking of us and coming to visit us here. Uh, we have a lot of fun. We try to engage in stream-based stream. learning. So science, technology, oh. reading, engineering, arts and humanities, and mathematics. Woo! We cover it all. Um, family oh. engagement at its best. Oh. Oh. all of it. I have to say that I enjoy that we wear masks inside now because my face is just ridiculous. <laughs> if we want to do like a sneak peek, I'm the whole time like, <gasps> all day. Oh my goodness. All right, guys. Well, we're going to end here and I'm going to slowly back away while you guys watch the bubbles. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Next month, I have no idea what we're doing, but it's going to be awesome. Have a beautiful weekend. <laughs> nice.